so Games Grabber is a games company um, that allows you to discover content across any gaming platform. It actually uses a very similar concept to Pinterest um, and therefore the, the grabber bit from Games Grabber is all about grabbing content from other websites across the web for you to then put them into your personal collection for other gamers to then follow you because they like similar games. So it's, it's a great social environment, very engaging and a great way to discover games. So we decided to take a crowdfunding route and there were two main reasons for that. One is VCs who we know and love dearly are excellent when you have much stronger KPIs, much bigger growth than a company that really only had you know, two or three months worth of usage, although it was going ex extremely high, it still wasn't big enough for a VC to come in and go, actually the KPIs aren't uh, are growing but we need to see more revenue and, and stronger growth. So our current investors who actually were happy to look at reinvesting felt that wouldn't it be great to validate this by getting the general public, the crowd to come in and actually invest in a small company and, um, and, and almost tick the boxes that they wanted to see. So um, having made the decision to go down um, a crowdfunding route, uh, you then have to find um, a crowdfunding company that's going to take you. Now I knew nothing about crowdfunding when I started this, so I had to put in a lot of research myself in terms of where do we go, who do we see, and um, the only one I had heard of actually was Kickstarter. Now Kickstarter is an American um, uh, company that everyone's heard of in terms of crowdfunding, but actually Kickstarter is all about people investing money in, in return for a product or getting um, the, the good up front or getting a credit within the film. Um, that's something that Games Grabber didn't want to do or didn't feel that we had a product to give you something early because we were already live. So in the UK, two th th there's a major difference. One is um, there are crowdfunding sites that have just started which allow you to buy equity um, and actually shares in that company. Now you can't actually do that in the US. Um, this is only um, a European thing and in fact started in the UK and is, is very regulated by the FCA. So having found that out, we looked at um, a number of crowdfunding equity sites. The two biggest in this country right now are Crowdcube and Cedars. Um, so I met both of those. I met Cedars first, actually. Um, both of them are only sort of 18 months, two years old, so they're startups themselves. Um, both of them were extremely good, um, and both of them had, in my view, similar amount of investors on their database. The reason I chose Crowdcube were two reasons. One is I felt that the products on Crowdcube were more tech-focused. Um, although when I look now, there are some tech-focused ones on Cedar, so they change. Um, and um, I also felt that Crowdcube did a bit more in terms of pushing my company to its database through newsletters and through their own marketing. Um, there is a third reason actually, and that is cost. Um, Crowdcube take 5% commission, and Cedars take 7.5% commission, so, so it's more expensive to go down Cedars. But actually, in the scheme of things, I think it's more important to look at, can you raise it, as opposed to what commission they're gonna take. So once we made that decision, that's where we went with Crowdcube, and then that's where the work starts. So how do you come up with a valuation for any company? Well, our valuation was based on a number of things. It was based on the fact that we had a growing user base, it was based on the fact that we had a great management team, it was based on the fact that we we're in a super hot market. And the valuation we put on Games Grabber was two million pounds. It's very rare to raise anything over 200, 300,000 pounds. You can do it, and there's some very famous stories of, of you know, people raising a million pounds on Crowdcube, but it's very rare. So the one advice I was told is don't try and raise too much money because it can put people off. So once you've decided on what uh, you want to raise, and in our case the target was 150, you then need to start putting your business plan together. Now, 
the the process to begin with is actually very tough right the, it's not simply just stick your name on a crowdfunding site and watch people come in there's there's a lot of regulations there's a lot of fca approval and an incredible amount of due diligence more so or just as much so as a vc will put into it um, anything that you say in your pitch has to be double checked and validated by the the the, the crowd in our case crowdcube who we went on to um, because of fca regulations again so um, the documents you have to put together are you know a full business plan a three-year financial plan which is then audited by crowdcube's financial accountants which you have to pay for so i'll come into the the fixed costs in a second um, they then um, have to approve that which once done crowdcube accepts and there's a lot of work that goes into that you know if you're, if you're not used to uh, Excel sheets and three-year financials you then have to hire an accountant and that's a big part of it then have the business plan you then have an exec summary and then you have to write a pitch which goes onto the site after that you then need to create a video there's not one crowdfunding site I know now where they don't um, where you don't have to do that you know you have to have a video now and you know, there's an expense there. You have to build, put a script in. You have to really sell the content. So, what I'm trying to say is, is what, it's not an easy process. And allow a whole month before you go live to really get that. You only know, have one go at this. Once the video is live and once your pitch is live, there's no going back. I remember the day very clearly. In fact, I was at a conference and it was the day that uh, Games Grabber went live on Crowdcube and every second I was looking at the website. It, it really was um, uh, very nerve-wracking and, and yet quite addictive. Um, and by the end of day one, out of the 150 I wanted to raise, 150,000 pounds, I'd raised 50 quid. <laughs> I was like, I've got to be honest, I was shitting my pants, right? They're, they're, I just thought there was absolutely no way within 60 days I'm going to get to 150 grand when all I've raised is 50. And, and actually, you know, when all I thought about for the previous 30 days and worked on every day was this crowd cube, to me, I was expecting the gates to flood open and, you know, I'll be halfway there and, you know. I could not, it could not have been further from the truth. It was the most scary thing ever. One week on, I think I'd only raised three and a half K and I was actually thinking, this is never gonna happen. You know, I'm phoning my friends up, I'm phoning family, you know, I'm going, why, where's all this money that everyone keeps talking about? So I remember calling Crowdcube and I remember saying, and I, uh, what's going on, you know? We're a week down, I've earned, 3,000 pounds in funding, you know, I've done everything I possibly can. And they actually said, do not worry about it. You've been living it and reading about it every day. People come onto the site at the weekend, they read it, they digest it, they think about it, they come back a week later and they might see what's going on. You know, this isn't, again, you hear these great stories about funding happening in two or three days. Yes, it does happen in some cases, the norm it doesn't. So my advice is don't panic too much when you, you start to see nothing really happen. However, what, what I did expect to happen quicker and, and, and was was more people start to follow me and engage with the pitch and it was quite clear after the first two weeks that just sitting back and hoping that crowdcube investors would see you and like you is is one tiny bit of the actual work you need to put in to get people to that site and actually pledging money And that's something that I hadn't factored in, how much work you put into after you go live. You know, you do all this work pre, you think you just sit back and just watch it, absolutely wrong. Now I, for the whole campaign really, spent 90% of my time meeting people, pushing them to the site, selling Games Grabber. I didn't know if they were gonna put in 10 pounds, which was the minimum amount, or the whole 150K. To them, they were an investor that, I wanted them to come and pitch money to. So it really, it, it was not easy. You know, you, you have to use every network you have, you have to use your LinkedIn, you have to use your friends, you have to get people to that site because it is like lemmings. And once you hit 30% of your funding, which happened in about three weeks, 
suddenly it's not people you recognize investing anymore and every time someone invests you get an email automatically with a template and saying how much they've invested and, and their name I, I get that and obviously no one else gets it and um, so, so you know for the first couple of weeks you recognize everyone because it's your friends or people that you've seen coming towards it and then you start to get the odd one or two which you don't recognize and then you get to 50% and suddenly it was quite amazing it just started to snowball and it was it was the biggest relief ever <laughs> because now I understood it you know people take time to read take time to digest it also want to sit back and see if other people are starting to do it if you have any angel investors that are going to put 10 20k in get them to do that right at the front because people start to think oh this is quite interesting that they you know don't hold them back to the end or don't try and do a, a deal off the side of it or anything like that get them to push it because once you start seeing those numbers go up people start to come in when we decided to go down the crowdfunding route uh, I remember having the board meeting where we decided that and as I'd never done it before I remember leaving going you know what uh, this could be a massive public failure or a massive public success and one of the things that you have to do once you decide to go down this route is go balls out there is no point going down a crowdfunding route unless you want to show your warts and all if, if you're a bit you know nervous and you don't want to do it and, and you don't want to promote it crowdfunding is not for you you know you have to go out there and just tell everybody about it and that's why it can be such a public failure because everybody knows you're doing it and and there's a huge risk behind that because if it does fail your current investors also lose faith because they kind of went let, let the crowd validate it you know we put some money in yeah we can come back in but actually you know if the crowd come in and, and really get behind it then you've, you've proved that you know that there's a market for it and my current investors aren't gamers you know, so they kind of needed that validation so although I totally believed in the product and games grabber you know is my life right now actually it's the public that are going to use it so there is there is a risk there fortunately um, you know we were successful so you know it kind of it, it, it proved that people were prepared to invest in it and it helped validate it to my current investors